Yes, sir. I told him he could come out and play with the grown-ups, but not too late. You think he's joking? Well, after the first six weeks on my back, I said, great, the only way to fight a war, especially with Libby here giving me back rubs twice a day. <laughs> mm. Tom got jealous when he found out I do it for all the boys. At ease, girl, Lieutenant. Sir, I've only got one more mission to fly to finish my tour of duty. I get plenty of rest after that. Seriously, sir, I feel fine. It's Doc here who insists I'm sick. Soda on the rocks. Well, you look pretty good to me, Doc. He probably is. But we don't know enough about hepatitis to take any chances. Tom's back on GI Chow now for about a week. Tomorrow we'll start a series of blood tests. If they come through negative, after three or four days, you can have them for target practice. Well, you heard the man. Just uh, take it easy on that soda. <laughs> yes, sir. Excuse me. Man. Oh, evening, sir. Thank you, Charlie. Good evening, gentlemen. What time does that new tail gunner of yours learn the difference between a parachute pack and a lunch pail? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. He sure did. Boy. I had a call up prepared to bail out of the cologne, and he sure learned quick. Never saw such a shower of bananas and hard-boiled eggs. <laughs> Steve, they haven't played that uh, Slap Slap Texas song in almost two minutes. Why don't you go put it on? Oh, yeah, it should be good. Mm -hmm. You repeat that song, huh? How'd it go at staff? Well, we got the big black beauty all right tomorrow morning. The aircraft plant in the Rome Valley. One and only. It's surrounded by 500 of the aircraft guns and all the enemy fighters we can eat. What's the casualty estimate? Deep in the heart of Texas, where we die, fight and hide. Deep in the heart. Tomorrow morning, one out of every three men in this room will be dead. Get him to bed early, mate. Robert Lanson. Also starring Frank Overton and John Larkin. With guest stars Glenn Corbett and Sally Kellerman. Tonight's episode, Those Who Are About to Die. Black batteries were set up heaviest along a southwestern approach. Naturally, that's where they'd expect us to come in. But your target charts are laid out for an IP directly west of the target. So we'll go over at right angles to the line of flight they're defending the most. That'll give them fewer shots at us, anyway. We'll be bombing in trail formation by the squadrons. So you lead bombardiers. And make sure we're right the first time. This is one we don't want to have to go back to. Lieutenant. Uh, well, sir, if we lose our escort 120 miles short of target, uh, what can we expect from enemy fighter action? There will be at least three enemy fighter squadrons on us, both before and after the bomb run. General, uh, the target being just about the limit of our range, sir, uh, well, we're not going to have a lot of fuel for evasive action. That's exactly right, Lieutenant. This one is a rough one from beginning to end. Rough. Oh, yeah. 
As you were, the fog is getting worse instead of better. We've been ordered to stand down. Right, hold it down. Hold it down. As of now, that means just for today. I remain alerted and on standby, so you hand in your target folders, but you'll be getting them back as soon as the weather clears. <clears throat> we're in no hurry, sir. <laughs> I know what you mean, Jensen, but there's a rub. All leaves and passes are canceled. The entire group will be restricted to the base. Aww. All right, knock it off. And make your phone calls into town if you have to call off anything, but you tell your girls or whoever that this is a real chicken outfit. The restriction is just disciplinary. Major? In cut! I think I'd rather face those crowd guns in my English filly when she finds out I can't make it for her birthday. I mean, it's been big plans for a month, you know. Uh, not me. Live a little longer, that's my motto. Sticks and stones may break your bones, but flack can kill you, man. <laughs> But you know how it is when you got just one left to fly, like you and me now. You go to that briefing room hoping it's going to be one of them skippy little milk runs over some sub pens or something. <laughs> well, here's the bride of Dracula. <laughs> how do you feel? Don't ask me. I just give the blood around here. <laughs> Lib, do you know my waist gunner, Sergeant Rutherford? Ma'am? Uh, uh, Ma'am, you uh, want me out of here or something? Doesn't matter. Have you heard from Dave and Jimbo? Yes, sir. They're back in the States teaching gunnery at Yuma. You and me is the only ones from the original crew ain't finished up yet. I thought I was going to get to be last when I got that flak in my leg, but then you went and got sick like you did. Funny thing is, I had this dream a couple, three nights ago where you and me rode the last one out together, the way we started. I didn't think it was going to be that way this morning, but here we both are. Can't never tell. Hate to knock your dreams, Sergeant, but we can tell that Lieutenant Lockridge's test won't be fully evaluated for two or three days. You should be a finished-up combat veteran by then. Oh, shoot, just one of them kind of dreams. Well, I guess I'd better leave you rest. I'll see you tomorrow if the fog holds, or after if it don't. Thanks for coming by, Mace. Say hi to the guys. Man. Lib? Is that true about it being three or four days before I can get out of here? Well, it's a professional guess. I'm not a doctor. What's the difference? Well, the difference is that last night I begged Doc Kaiser to mark me for duty. I felt fine. I feel fine now. But this morning when I heard about the kind of mission we drew, I was relieved. I was glad he didn't turn me loose. It's only natural. What's natural? That I should be scared stiff? After 24 missions, Tom, you don't have to prove anything. The ones behind you don't count, Lib. When you're scared, every mission's the first and last. I think you're being a little unfair to yourself. To myself or to the poor joker that's got to fly that mission in my place? Is your back ache? I can rub it for you. Can I get you anything? A couple of good stiff drinks. Yeah. Little booze would give me plenty of symptoms, and I could lie here with no ifs, ands, or buts. I'll take the sample to the lab. I'll come back. That's no, okay, Lev. I'm gonna sack out early. Hey, what? 
Yeah, John. People really live in this place when there's no war on. Who? Listen, I don't care if we never take off again. Well, at least I wouldn't if we could go into town and have some fun. Maybe the fog's Hitler's new secret weapon, huh? Hey, Chick, cut it out! Nothing works, Brenda. Hey, Chick, 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 watch it! I have ease! Sorry, sir. Just, uh, just horsing around. Morning, Tom. How's it going? About the same, I guess. I don't know. He was nauseous during the night and again this morning. Oh? Uh -huh. I came in here all full of good news. The uh, blood test came back just about normal. Well, great, that means I'm okay, right? Well, it means your blood is okay. The rest of you may be a mess. Does that hurt? No. What did you have for dinner last night? The same as everyone else. You didn't smuggle in any beer or candy bars, I hope. What do you mean? I don't mean a thing. Just trying to explain those nausea symptoms you say you're having. I say I'm having. What's going on here? You two have a fight? He thinks Savage and the men suspect him of playing sick so he can duck the mission. Lib, just stay out of it. Tom, you know better than that. You also know I can't let you out of here as long as you're showing relapsed symptoms of hepatitis. And nausea is one of those symptoms. Okay, you're the doctor. If I'm not well enough to get out of here, then I guess I'm sick enough to be left alone. Is that all right with everybody? Tom! It's all right, Liv. Why don't you just look in on some of your other patients, huh? Yes, sir. What are you looking at? You're not malingering, Tom, even if you think you are. I wish it were as simple as that. Meanwhile, the two of you are confined to quarters pending court-martial. That'll be all. On the surface, General, a purely routine disciplinary matter, but I think you saw why I asked you to be here. Yeah, sure. I didn't really want to sneak off the base, I just wanted to be caught trying. Yes, sir. And then fighting with the MPs when they obviously had no chance, nothing to gain. Yeah, nothing to gain except being grounded. Isn't that your point, Major? Yes, sir. Any more like this? No, sir, this is the first, but there, somebody else is bound to get the same idea. General, when they start using the guardhouse as the lesser of two evils, I'd say that morale's just about hit rock bottom. Well, what would you suggest, Major? Keep them busy. Close order drill, all day if necessary. Give them something to be mad at beside the fog itself. They've got plenty of things to do, Major, but they're not children. They've got a right to be mad at the fog. You, me, war, the whole business. Well, if they can't beat their own fear, there's not much chance of their beating anybody else, is there? No, sir. Talk to you later. General Savage, may I talk to you, sir? It's 
course, come in. Thank you. I understand uh, you're getting pretty crowded over at your place, huh? Crowded? Yeah, I saw the sick call report this morning. It looked like an epidemic. Oh, well, it's nothing serious. Well, how is Tom? That's what you wanted to talk about, isn't it? Yes, sir. Sir, please. General, he's not well enough to fly. You said he was. Major Kaiser. Tom's tests show he's physically sound. And Tom himself insists he feels well enough to leave the hospital. Well, that kind of puts you in a minority, doesn't it? No, sir. No, I think Tom is lying. He doesn't want it to look like he's trying to get out of a rough mission. Nobody'd think that. Tom is just doing it to himself. Tell Tom he can't fly that mission under any circumstances. That it's too soon after his illness. That, that you can't risk his having a relapse in combat, commanding a plane and crew. In other words, take the decision out of his hands. If that's the only way to keep him from committing suicide, yes, sir. One pilot, more or less, can't keep your mission from being a success. But tell, do you really believe that it is that easy to fool a veteran combat officer? He couldn't question your order, sir. Lieutenant, Tom Lockeridge is no parade ground soldier, and he is nobody's fool. Now, he's going to wonder why I'm coddling him. And he'll begin to wonder who asked me to. If Tom knew that... That's not fair, sir. I love Tom, and I can't sit by and watch something happen when I know it's wrong. Mothering him isn't going to make it right, Lynn. You might save his life. But then you wouldn't have the man you fell in love with, would you? personal flare-ups among the men are only symptoms of the real problem. Now, three days ago, your group was a well-integrated, disciplined unit. Best morale on the air coast. Three days ago. Now, was all that training, all that discipline, that dedication that shallow? Oh, well, they've only blown their tempers at a few minor rules and regulations. That's their way of releasing a fear they usually keep to themselves. You're talking as though they'd blown the whole mission. You expect me to wait until they do? I said they were the best. That's why this mission was assigned to them. Now, I want a professional opinion, Doctor. Are they still up to it? Physically, yes. Well, that isn't what I asked you. I'm no psychiatrist, General. Well, you have to do. Well, it's obvious they'll go into combat more keyed up than they normally would. Be all sorts of overcompensations. Navigators will be complaining about the weather information. The gunners will be expecting their guns to misfire. All that sort of thing. I'd say that their overall efficiency would be less than their best, yes, sir. So would I. Frank, I'm going to take this one off your back. As soon as this weather clears, I'll assign it to another group. Well, I'm no professional psychiatrist either. But I think that's the worst thing you could do. You want your men to fly it? No, but I think they have to. Excuse me. 
Excuse me, General, but you know as well as any of us that reduced efficiency in combat will probably lead to greater casualties. Possibly, Major, not probably. I'm sorry, sir. I don't understand. Major, thank you for coming over here. I appreciate your opinion and your judgment. And that will be all. Understand. Because, Wiley, if you reassign this mission to another group, my men will find out about it. So what? They'll jump for joy. Oh, sure, at first. They'll soon find out that, as you put it, they weren't up to it. Oh, they'll make jokes. They'll be cynical about it, you know, let George do it. And then they're going to learn about the casualty reports of the group that did fly this mission. The group that did our job for us. It's a fine point, Frank. But I have to keep first things first. The success of this mission is what's important to me, not who flies it. Why, is this the mission that wins the war, Wiley? Right. Well, is it? Who's going to fly the missions next week, next month? The men who weren't up to it today? You said three days ago we were the best. We were. We still are. Not because of any discipline or training or any of that junk. We are the best because we think we are. And that's what you want to take away from us. Will you stop yelling at your superior officer? Draw a tough assignment. All right, at first you gripe about it, you know. Why me? At some place you begin to grow a little bit inside because somebody thinks you can do it. And this will be tough. Tougher now because of the fog and the delay, but the men who fly this mission and come back from it will be the better for it. Kaiser knows that I was prepared to reassign this mission. If I don't now, he'll also know that it was because you asked me not to. Well, the good doctor's not the kind who talks, but he'll know. If your men find out that it's not staff who's making them do this, but you, personally, well... Yeah, it wouldn't make any difference. Okay, Frank. Do it your way. Take care of yourself. As you said, this is not the mission that'll win the war. I may be wrong, but I think we need you around here. on the wards tonight? I just came on duty. You released Tom. Obviously. He insisted and I had no medical reason to refuse. You know he's not fit for duty. He's as fit as any man in this room, but I grant you that might not be saying much. But you shouldn't have allowed him to... Oh, that's what this war needs. <laughs> A little more feminine companionship. Huh? Hey, Doc, you don't mind if we sit down, do you? I can't, Steve. I have to get back. Oh. Tom, can I talk to you alone? Sure, Lib. But it's uh, raining out and there's no place in here. Well, the bar then. Just for a moment, and I'll go right back. Well, this is a bribe. Oh, noble physician designed to warm the truth out of you. You didn't know that we knew that uh, the big General Crow sent for you this afternoon, did you? But why, Major Quack Doctor? That is the question. That's a military secret. <laughs> you speak with fucking tongue. <laughs> Hey, no kidding, I'm uh, only a little drunker than I really am. Did he say anything about the mission? 
Nothing new. Not to me. Why don't you ask the general? Ah. Hey, now, you wouldn't be uh, trying to drum up a little business, would you? <laughs> oh, 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 no, wait a minute. Now, here, now. You drink your bride there, huh? Tom, I don't want to seem like a baby, but I'm frightened. But if you won't turn it down for your own sake, do it for me, please. I can't. You mean you won't? Tom, you don't have to prove that you're not afraid. I am afraid to die, Libby. But I don't want to die afraid. Tom? Wasn't that your, uh... Favorite lieutenant I just saw go on? Yes, sir. She's due back at the hospital. Night duty. And drinking? Ginger ale. Uh, whiskey need, Joe. You still following Doc's order? No, sir. Just no taste for the hard stuff tonight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cheers. Um, now, when you take that airplane of yours into combat, those nine men under your command deserve the very best you can give, not just the best you can manage. Yes, sir. I heard that uh, you had some symptoms the other day, nausea. That's kind of a bad sign for a man recovering from hepatitis. Who told you? It doesn't matter, does it? Was it Libby? Is it true, Tom? Yes, sir. Nausea is a symptom of ear trouble, pregnancy, and a hangover. It can also be a symptom of fear, isn't that true, sir? Yeah, it can be, Tom. Good evening, Yanks. This is your gal, Sal. Hey, Axel, you did it right on time. There's your sweetheart. I'm talking to you flyboys of the 918th Bombardment Group. We had a date a few days ago, and I had all my friends in the Luftwaffe ready to meet you. They know we're coming. They don't know where. It's an old trick. Or is she your wife now? Oh, boy. All this cheese and no trap, huh? Now, come on, knock it off, Jason. General, we off duty in here, aren't we? Uh, uh, General, we're not blaming you, sir. We we know that the big boys at staff push a button with our names on it, and that's it. Uh, now, maybe the Krauts don't know our target, but maybe they do, sir. Well, the point is, we've been stewing over one rumor or another for the last three days, locked in here with nothing else to think about or to, to do. All of us, Steve. That includes General Savage. He doesn't want it this way any more than we do. Yeah. I'm sorry. All right, let's hold it down for a minute. I think there's something you may not have known. General Crow came by my office this morning. Major Kaiser was there. The general offered to relieve us of this mission, to assign it to another group. He feels that the strain of waiting has been too much for us. We're beginning to fall apart. Major Kaiser agreed with him. I 
I turned the offer down. You want us to go through this? I think we have to. General, the rain stopped. It's washed out the fog. Checked and confirmed. Anticipate the morning clear and cold. Will there be anything else, sir? You didn't have to tell him. No, Doc, you didn't have to. Shaped up, over. Blue Wing One, Darrow Head Leader. I'm all in. Okay to test guns. Pilot to right waist. Clear your throat. to Blue Wing 2. You're lagging, Steve. Close it up. Uh, Blue Wing 2 to leader. We're having some difficulty with number 2 engine. Check that. Uh, running smooth again. Closing formation. Leader to all flights, keep your eyes wide open. Anticipate enemy contact momentarily. Bandits 10, 11 o'clock high. Over and under, Mace. Pick them up. We're getting close. Well, General, it looks like the men have gotten rid of all the butterflies they had in their stomachs. Yeah, maybe. Enemy planes are something you can fight, you can shoot back at. It's riding out flak that makes you feel helpless. Dead ahead, sir.
navigator to pilot. 30 seconds to IP. Arrowhead leader to all flights, rolling out on the IP. Pilot to Bombardier, say when, Mike. Roger. handle that plane if you have to. Well, sir, I don't know. I can try, sir. Arrowhead leader to Blue Wing 1. Leader to Blue Wing 1. Blue Wing 1 to Arrowhead leader, over. Did you hear that business with Steve? Yes, sir. All right, now listen to me carefully. Henderson is no pilot. He's going to need all the help he can get. Especially when we take on those fighters coming out of here. He group your formation to protect his nose. If they lose another man up front, they're going to have to abandon. Acknowledge. Over. Well, it's the right way. Space how bad if we catch it back there. This is the skipper. Come in. Mace! Mace is head, skipper. Come. He said it was good luck, the two of us finishing together. Me up front and him in the waist. Good luck. Arrowhead leader to Blue Wing 1. Can you regroup? Acknowledge. Over. Arrowhead 
squad leader. This is co-pilot, Blue Wing One. Never mind. Arrowhead leader, this is Blue Wing One. Orders received in the college. Preparing to regroup. Blue Wing leader to all units. Assume flight formation all around Blue Wing Two. Concentrate firepower to divert bandits at 12 o'clock. Check in when accomplished. Can you hear me? Move his hand straight back. Interrogation, Henderson. Go on, I'll talk to you later. There's nothing to talk about, Libby. Not now, anyway. Tally was minus six, including the one you radioed was forced down near Dover. That's better than we expected. They're all better than we expected, Wyatt. Mind if I walk along with you? 